And welcome back, YouTube. This is Booster Max Buster here with something amazing. Today I am celebrating my 2,000 subscriber special. Thank each and every one of you for getting me to 2,000 subs. You guys rock. With the Dungeons & Dragons Miniatures Monster Manual Legendary Evils Booster Case Opening. Now, the Legendary Evil set is legendary in more than just one way. I'm going to tell you the breakdown of the set here in a minute. Uh, this set was the third to last set to ever be released in the original D&D Miniatures line. It was the second of three sets to contain one visible miniature and four randomized miniatures. In addition to that, it's also the second of three sets to contain... 40 miniatures as opposed to the standard 60, which was usually the standard at the time. And it's also the fourth of five huge miniature sets released in the D&D line. Now something very unique about this set is all the huge miniatures in the set are actually the visible miniatures, so they went all out and put some of the most desirable miniatures in this set as the visible miniatures. As you can tell, we got a Beholder right here. Absolutely fantastic choice. Honestly, I'm very surprised that they made that invisible because that one would sell out pretty quickly. And on top of that, in a case, you got one of each. So it wasn't like you get two of a garbage one and one rare one. No, you got it was evenly distributed. So I like that fact as well. Uh, you got this really awesome uh, Baylor here. You got this Green Dragon. I mean, you got so many great miniatures as the visible ones. And you also have some great uh, random ones that you can get as well. So they did a fantastic job with this set as terms of miniature appeal. But you guys did not come to hear me talk. So once we get through the lore on the box... We're going to start opening some miniatures. So as you can tell, this side right here, we have the checklist, collect all 40. If my calculations are right, we should get most of the set. We're going to be missing about half the rares, but that's the way that these booster cases work. You get this lovely image of the Beholder Eye Tyrant right here. And you get some lore on the back of the box. Unfortunately, my camera is not tilted high enough to see the, uh, the English version, so I'm going to go ahead and read that off to you. And you can look at the different languages right here. Boss Monsters Unleashed. This new Monster Manual theme set features 40 Dungeons & Dragons monsters from multiple sources, just what every dungeon master or D&D enthusiast needs to create riveting adventures and exciting encounters at all levels of play. Each Monster Manual Legendary Evil's Booster Pack contains one visible, fully painted, durable plastic huge monster miniature, four randomized, fully painted, durable plastic monster miniatures, not huge, and four uh, full-color D&D Dungeon Delve stat cards. So that is what's contained in here. Now, I'm going to have to move uh, some of these just so I could show you what ones I'm going to be opening. So first up, we have this bad boy right here. This really cool demon. So we are going to be opening this particular pack. Sealed on like a carded uh, action figure would be. And I know it's going to have this good old zip tie, as they typically do. And it's kind of cool. The randomized miniatures come in this... Uh... Ah. Come in this little sealed case right here. And we will be opening that as soon as we take a look at our big boss monster here. Yep, of course we got the zip tie in the back. 
That's a really different zip tie. I didn't think I was going to need scissors. I'll be right back. Professionalism at its finest. There we go. Took care of that. Look at that beast. All right, so let's take a good look at him. Very well detailed. Look at that ugly mug right there. So this is the Goristo. Or Goristo. It is 24 out of 40. All visibles are uncommon. This is a demon that is very reminiscent of a minotaur. Very cool, very bulky, very strong. Actually, this could work very well as a substitute for a minotaur if you don't happen to have a miniature, a mini, a minotaur miniature lying around. This could substitute very well for one. Look at that face. It is really well done. As the visible miniature should be, because well, they're visible, so you're going to be seeing. A lot of them on the store shelves. So they want those to be the standouts. I love the armbands that he's wearing. The fur texture is done pretty well. Even get a little bit of a booty action right there. Very nice. This is a very, very well done miniature. Very happy to add it to the ranks. All right, so let's see what we get for our randomized miniatures. Now, one thing I will say is uh, this set was released around the toward the beginning-ish era of uh, AD or uh, fourth edition. So there might be. I didn't play a lot of 4th edition, so there might be some monsters that I'm just unfamiliar with. So apologize about that. And I think there's a couple monsters that were like either very rarely used or pretty much created just for the miniature line. Okay. So it opens up that way. So let's do it this way. Yeah, like that. Okay. So our first miniature up is going to be... Ooh, that's a slad, like a very tiny slad. You don't see him that tiny. So let's take a look at the name. The name is the slad spawn, and that is a common. Let's take a look at him. I don't know if it's intentionally done like that, or if uh, the face is just a little bit, like if it's just a little bit blotchy around the face and stomach, but it does look pretty cool. Um, if it's not intentional, I could definitely use a retouch. I understand commons are a little bit uh, easier to uh, mess up, and they make a lot of them, so typically... A little bit less attention is done to. Very well done uh, spikes on the back. I really like the back of this guy. He looks really cool on the back. On the front, uh, I don't... Honestly, it could work. It could be like a really weird scaling issue. Maybe it's the spawn is kind of deformed or not quite... Um, 
uh, maybe maybe it's just you know quite ugly or quite or just like it was hastily made so it's just like it is what it is you know type thing I could see it working in like a, a, in a like a deep dungeon type place so that is the slad spawn our next ooh that's a minotaur speaking of minotaurs That is the Minotaur Thug. Very cool. Really well done muscles on the back there. I'm going to put this down here so it's not so much... Honestly, probably just be best to rip this side off. There we go. Much better. I do... The little uh, cleaver he's carrying is kind of cool. I always thought minotaurs were a little bit bigger. Maybe not quite that size, but I always thought minotaurs... Maybe this could be done as like a... Like a playable minotaur type character. Or a smaller minotaur. Not bad. That is a common, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that is a common, so. So yeah, not not the worst thing, but uh not my favorite common, I'm not gonna lie. We got a big boy here. Okay, so I think this one is actually... I, I was trying to look up information on this guy, and I really could not find much. So this one is named the Psychic Sinodal, and I, I, I do not know much about this guy at all. So anybody in the comments down below want to inform me, that'd be great, because I have no idea what really a Psychic Sinodal is supposed to be. Probably something on the ethereal plane, ethereal plane. Really, it, it could easily be used as some sort of construct, maybe like a celestial construct. You can even probably use this as like a fire elemental in some sort of stretch if you need a fire elemental. Or a uh, crystal, like maybe like a ruby giant or something. Ruby construct, that'd be kind of cool. Looks menacing. Very tall, large size figure for sure. That is the Psychic Sentinel. Sentinel. And ooh, that's pretty cool. That was a rare? Yeah. I think I know what this is. So. This is the Foul Spawn Seer, a rare as well. Did we get two rares? Huh, according to this, we got two rares. That's interesting. So this is a Foul Spawn Seer, a creature that had its mind warped, but not by its own choice. This could easily be used as like maybe like a ogre shaman or a goblin shaman or like a mage, S something very similar to that. If you need a stand-in, very cool. His face is a little bit ugly, but once again, it's supposed to be because it's had its mind twisted and deformed by, like I said, by no choice of its own. Very cool miniature. And then, we got the stack cards. Very cool.
All right, so up next, I'm going to be opening up the Iron Dragon. Very cool, very awesome miniature. put that right there for now. Unleash the Iron Dragon. Now believe it or not, back in the day I actually had a chance to get some Legendary Evils packs when they were still on store shelves. And Iron Dragon was one of the ones that I got and I thought it was the coolest thing back then. So let's take a look at the Iron Dragon. Very cool miniature. Look at that scaling on the back. So cool. So cool. The wings are really well done. A lot of detail to the uh, where the bone would be. The face the the, uh, the little hor the horns running off the side here and the mouth the pose this is like classic dragon I absolutely love this particular miniature all right and now for the randoms I love how they put a little bit of a piece of tape there just to make it that much more annoying to get to because it wasn't already covered in plastic already. Alright, so I'm going to open it from... Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I guess we have our first rollout. And that happens to be this weird miniature. Now comes one of these plastic things because this is a weaker one that can easily get damaged. How wonderful. Although I do appreciate that they put them in these so they uh, will stay to their true form instead of warping and being bent halfway over when you receive it. So... This right here is the scrap iron, or the scarecrow stalker. I was thinking of scrap iron scarecrow from Yu-Gi-Oh, and that is a common. Very cool miniature. Um, this could easily be used as just a farm decoration, if you want to have a scarecrow in the farm, or it could be used as like, you know, a, a dark, you know, a dark. Uh, a dark mage used its power to bring the scarecrow to life, put a soul in it, and now it's attacking whoever it sees. Kind of a cool little concept there. That's supposed to be there? Not quite sure. Very cool common miniature. I do like it. Our next one is going to be... Oh, oh, I'm happy with this. I really wanted one of these. And now I got one. Alright. So this... The Auroch... Draconian. Now the Draconian, this is a rare by the way, are essentially an offshoot or like a, like, kind of like, I, I don't want to say brothers, but I, I, I want to say like, uh, 
very similar to Dragonborns. They could actually be replaced as Dragonborns if you want to, if you need a stand-in for a Dragonborn, because they are very similar. However, the Draconian are typically all evil and servers of uh, Tiamat. Very, very cool. I absolutely love this one. It looks like a mage just casting uh, some sort of some sort of magic spell up there, maybe like a fireball or or something, and it's just ready, maybe an orb of light or something, and it's just ready to throw it at its opponent. Really, really cool monster here. Absolutely love it. Definitely, like I said, this could easily be used as a stand-in for like a, dra a dragonborn mage if you want to. Absolutely fantastic miniature. Look at the detail on its face here. Don't want to get too close. Love the robe. The orb is what really brings this miniature all together. Fantastic miniature. That's the Aruk Draconic. Or, it's not Draconic, sorry. Draconian. Draconian, not Draconic. I don't know why I said Draconic. Draconian. Our next miniature is another big boy, and it's... Ooh, 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 another one I'm very happy to pull. They did release this one in Angel Fire, but I don't think the Angel Fire one quite did it justice, which is kind of odd, because usually I'm more prone to the... to, to the medium older sets like that, but this guy is fantastic. Here is the Hezro. Uh, are we getting two rares per pack? Do they make this uh, set just rares? That's weird. But this is the Hezro. Very, very happy to pull the Hezro. Look at the detail on his back there. That is fantastic detail. The Hezros are, of course, a, uh, a relatively strong but incredibly dim-witted uh, monster of from the Demon Realm. Kind of, kind of like the foot soldiers, the 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 foot soldier muscles of the Demon Realm. Very, very cool. Very happy to add this to my collection. Such a cool monster. Look at that. The arm, the gauntlet on his hand, ready to punch someone in the face pretty hard. Yeah, just a fantastic monster. The Hezro. Very happy to... Th this has been a fantastic pack. And... Okay, so I believe this is, if he wants to show, the, the Duergar guard. The Duergar guard. That is a common. So these are essentially like dark dwarfs. Kind of like the dwarfs of, uh, the Underdark. Very, very cool. It could easily be used as a foot soldier or an NPC if you do want to use uh, a Duergar as an NPC character. Or a PC character. Love the chainmail. The chainmail is really well done on this guy. The, the braided hair is actually a really nice touch. I do like that quite a bit. Adds a little bit of personality to a otherwise not so personality wise miniature very nice so that is pack number two and of course I gotta take out the cards I don't want to forget about them now we move on to pack number three just gotta grab it here and it is the storm titan I believe if I remember correctly
Maybe this set just uh, did not have any uncommons other, and it was just uh, rares or. Uh... Was there not having it? Oh, okay, cool. No, uh, no ties for that guy. Now this is a really, really awesome miniature. I, I'm usually not a huge fan of giants, but I, I think they did an excellent job with this one. Yep, the Storm Titan, 37 out of 40. This guy has a lot of detail too. I absolutely love the, uh, the lightning that he's kind of channeling right there. Almost looks like a bow and arrow or maybe a spear of some kind he's summoning. Love the beard. The, uh, the, like, lightning bolt, uh, tattoos on him. So cool. It, it, honestly, this kind of looks like a Zeus-like character, and I love it. Look at the hair flowing right there. And the energized base that he's on. You didn't, you rarely seen this back in the day on the old miniatures. This is so cool. They, they wanted this to be a standout miniature in this particular line. This is just so cool with the uh, like this uh, electrified flowing base around him. It is, it looks like he's he's charging up a, a, a chakra attack from Naruto. It is just so cool. I love it. This is probably one of the better uh, visible miniatures that they've done in my opinion. That is the Storm Titan. And it is huge too. I mean, it, I mean, it's taller than that dragon when the dragon's standing on its feet. So, And now for the randoms. This one actually feels kind of heavy. Maybe we get two uh, large size miniatures. That'd be kind of cool. Actually, let me check some. Well, it doesn't actually show rarity on this side. That's kind of interesting. So our first miniature up is, ooh, I'm very happy to have this. You can never have too many cultists. Now I believe this is actually supposed to be a special kind of cultist, but obviously you could use it just as a standard any type of cultist. And this is the Doom Dreamer common. So. The Doom Dreamer, from what I understand, is the highest rank of cultist who worship the Dark God. And, and I gotta say, they did a really good job, for, especially for a common. I mean, let's take a look here. The face isn't bad. Uh, the, I love the chain around his neck there, that's really cool. Uh, some sort of... let me just take a closer look. I think that's some sort of mace that he's carrying, like a small bludgeoning object on his uh, left side there. That's kind of cool. Of course he's in that praising mode. Maybe he's in a ceremony trying to summon some sort of like acolyte of the dark, dark god. That'd be kind of cool to to set up for that. Of course you need multiple of them, you can't just have one cultist, that'd be kind of pointless. But yeah, absolutely fantastic uh, common miniature there. Up next, this is huge! Holy cow! No wonder it's so heavy. Look at that ugly mug. Now this, I actually did pull from one of my uh, previous Back in the day, uh, miniatures, booster packs. So this is a, actually a duplicate for me, so if somebody out there wants him, I could definitely trade him. And this is the War. Oh wow, that's a smudge if i ever seen one. I did not do that, by the way. I think that's just like glue or something. War Troll. 
Now, it is ugly, but I do say they did a lot of good detail. The spikes on the shield, the little design on the shield there, that's very nice. The, uh, his armor is actually really, really well detailed and has a whole bunch of spikes, as a war troll probably would. The sword is a bit, is bent, but that's easily fixable. He even has his hair braided, or not braided, but in a ponytail back there with a uh, very heavy studded, uh, like metal scrunchie. That's, that's insane. I don't know how that actually quite works if, if I uh, have to ask you that. Very, very cool. And look at that face. It looks like the Wicked Witch of the West with that nose. It is fantastically ugly. That's the War Troll. No wonder it was so heavy. I'm, this guy is literally almost as large as some of the large miniatures back here, as some of the huge miniatures. So that's a very, very large, large. I know, that's redundant. Okay. What do we have here? So... This is a Gith Zarai Cenobite. Very cool miniature. I don't think this set has any Gith Yankee. Gith Yankee, I think it's just Gith Zarai, which is a little bit unfortunate. It'd be kind of nice to have some, a little bit of each. But, very cool nonetheless. He could, he could actually be used as a cultist if you need a stand-in cultist, too. I absolutely like that uh, duality of this miniature. And that is a rare, believe it or not. Well, I think this set literally only has common and rare for its... Uh, um, random miniatures. So that's a little bit sad. We got our stack cards, and oh, we got ourselves another Salad spawn. So that will go in the duplicate pile. Actually, we I think we've ran into the most commons, so commons should be going pretty quick now. Up next, we have this like. Frost Giant or Ice Giant? Put it in front of the camera so you can see me peel it back. I'm just afraid I'm going to smack the camera and knock everything out of focus, sir. Out of the spot that I want it to be. And he does not have any uh, attachments either. He just pops right out, I think. Come on, dude. wait. There we go. And here are the randoms, which once again feels pretty heavy. So here is our. Uh, is it Frost? Yeah, Frost Frost Titan, I'm wrong. Not a not a giant, a Titan. Now please tell me why they gave this guy this really, really cool base, but not this guy. Uh, if you give this guy a base, you gotta give this guy a really cool base too, with like ice and, you know, everything kind of popping up. That'd be really cool. So this is the Ice Frost Titan. I really love the translucency of it. It's really cool. The beard makes him look like Santa Claus. Or some sort of forgotten king. And actually he's wearing a crown. So he is a king of his own castle at least. He might be the king of some sort of titan community. That'd be kind of cool. I love the uh, axe made of ice. Now in my opinion an axe made of ice is probably going to shatter upon impact. But of course if if he used to make making magic. He could probably make it hold together as he swims it. Really well done detail to his... Uh, armor here. I love the like fur coming off the edges of the armor there. That's a really nice little touch. His feet is are literally just um, made of ice. 
you almost see it's actually kind of cool because the little uh, pegs to hold him in place actually make it look like he's uh has some like black ice or like little like rocks or something kind of ho holding him together there that's that's a really unintentionally cool touch i think so that's the frost titan Now we go to the randoms. In my calculations, I think we have three commons we have yet to see. And... Yeah, yeah, something heavy is in this one. I don't know what, but something heavy. Anybody want a war troll? It's up for trade. Alright, so our first miniature up is... Oh! This is a goblin of some sort. Get that out of the way. And this is... The Goblin Cutter. It is a common. So that is common number six. Looks quite crazy. As a lot of goblins do, actually. Not a terrible goblin. Uh, the face could definitely use a little bit of work, but uh, not not bad if you need a if you need a goblin. And honestly, this would just be like the foot soldier, like running right, you know, suicidally into the throat of combat. Really, really cool. Uh, like. Suicidal Goblin there. Pretty cool. That is... Let's see if I can save the big guy. See if they're... Like, they're like small oh, oh, okay. So we got another... Uh, Doom Dreamer Cultist. Very nice. Oh, you can never have too many cultists. That absolutely sounds wrong when you say it out loud. But in the world of Deity, it, it makes sense. Ooh, okay, so this is another relatively large, large miniature, and I do actually have this one as well. So this is another duplicate, if anybody out there would like to trade. So this is a Talon Slad Rare. I gotta say, I love it. It's big, it's bulky, it's beefy. And it's hungry. Has the two claws, like Shredder, coming out there, or Wolverine. The face is actually pretty well done. I even see, his eyes are actually well painted too, I like that. Yeah, it looks like he's looking down at his enemy in front of him. Pretty cool. This is actually a really well done miniature, and I love the little bumps, the scaly bumps that he has, and the uh, the spikes coming out of his back. This is a really well done miniature. It's for trade, but it's but it, I, I do say it's high quality for uh, pre painted miniature. And the last one is okay. Not one on the top of my list to get, but it will. But it is a new one, and it will do nicely in the collection. So this is... The Dugar Cleric of Asmodeus. Once again, can easily be used as a playable character or non-playable character. I love the mace that he's holding. Pretty good detail. The beard is classic. And the uh, cloak he's wearing is actually pretty cool. Unusual for uh, the Duergar to wear to be a cleric. So that's a really nice uh, touch that they made one. In case anybody wants to run with as an NPC or needs one, or as a PC or needs one in an NPC encounter. Really, really cool. I like it a lot. And of course, I can't forget about the stack cards. Alright, so we're down to our final four. 
and I'm definitely opening up Yeah, we're going to go with Mr. Dragon here. Move that over, that over, and this over. So, when this video concludes, please let me know what your favorite miniature pulled was. I gotta say, mine so far is probably... The Draconian, I really, really like that miniature, or the, uh, or the Hezro. Either the Draconian or the Hezro are probably my favorite ones I pulled so far. Any piece holding your win? Nope. Okay, that's an easy snap off. Alright, so of course we got ourselves an Elder Green Dragon, fantastic miniature. This is another one that I actually was able to pick up back in the day. So this is a duplicate up for trade, but it is honestly, I mean, it, it just looks great on the shelf. The, the Elder Green Dragon, it is fantastic. It's, it looks like it's crawling, it is really, really cool. The mouth, the horn, the eyes, really well done on this miniature. The uh, back here, super scaly, love the uh, spikes coming out, the, the wings are super well attended to. This is just a really, really cool miniature, and honestly would work great for any encounter. For any dragon encounter. Fantastic. Alright, I'm going to replace you with you for the time being, just to get something new in the picture. And of course we have our randoms. We've seen most commons by now, I think we're just missing one, maybe two commons. This one is a bit lighter, so we're probably going to have at least one small rare. And first up... Ooh! That's actually really, really cool. I've never owned this miniature, so I'm very happy to own it. So, if uh, it wants to focus, we have the Rhyme Fire Griffin, and oh man, that looks super dirty on the bottom there. Don't know what happened. The Rhyme Fire Griffin. Interesting. Love the uh, painting done underneath the wings here. Not gonna lie, when miniatures are mostly one color, especially a lighter color, it can be very hard to uh, make it look good, especially on the paint job. And I gotta say, the paint job I don't think is the best, but it's satisfactory for tabletop play, especially when you're not gonna be looking at it very closely. Um, like I said, not my favorite paint job, and on the inside of the mouth, I think they completely forgot to color it. So that's a bit of a disappointment, unless Rhymefire Griffins have white tongues, which I don't think they do, but I could be wrong about that. I, I don't know too much about Rhymefire Griffins, so apologies. That is, yeah, the Rhymefire Griffin. Uh, I'm going to move the War Troll for now. Oh, we got ourselves another Goblin Cutter. A, uh, 
that's that card. Another Minotaur Thug. And... Ooh, ooh, I'm happy to get this. Now this is an uncommon monster encounter, unless you're in the Underdark. And this monster's name is the Yolo, or Yoklo Tempter. Now the uh, Yoklo are very interesting monsters. They are uh, servants of the Spider God. And they are shapeshifters, and they like to tempt our spider god Loth. Yeah, that's for. I, I apologize. I I drew a blank on the name. They're servants of Loth, and they basic are shapeshifters, and they can turn themselves into, I believe, uh, the Drow. They can turn. They can shapeshift into Drow, and kind of. That they're very good at conversation, almost like a succubus. They, they're alluring, they, they're very good conversationalists. They, they basically try to manipulate you into, and tricking you into following them, and then they lead you into traps, or they, uh, they, they essentially lead you into traps, which is a really, really cool miniature. Now they, honestly, when I first seen this monster, I thought it was a slime, but I was wrong. And I gotta say, I'm. It's a really, really cool uh, monster. It could actually be used as some sort of slime monster if you need a slime encounter, or you could use it as intended, as the Yoklo. Very, very cool miniature. Love it. Very happy to get one. Now our next one we're going to be opening is, of course, the Baylor. The Baylor is a really, really cool monster. Don't know why, but the Rhinefire Griffin just seems unfinished to me. It doesn't look like it's fully painted. Maybe I'm just uh, seeing it incorrectly, though. Maybe it is, and I'm just wrong. Alright, so, we have come to the Babel. Let's get the randoms out. Put them to the side for now. So this is the Baylor. I gotta say, it looks menacing. It actually looks like it came straight out of Doom. Which is not a bad thing at all. I love Doom. The wings are fantastic. I love the, uh, the minimal armor to cover the uh, important parts. And, there seems to be a really weird glare right there. Okay, just sorry, just wanted to make sure that it's not affecting anything. Really, really cool. The teeth, I mean the mouth just looks like it's ready to eat you, chomp you right in half. The feet, really well done. The flame whip and sword, the classic combo of the Baylor. The weapons of choice and it is large and in charge I mean here just to give you an idea a human a baler you're gonna eat you but yeah um 
Now I'm not gonna lie, even though the scale isn't quite right, I do prefer the Baylor from uh, Blood War, but this one is more scaled correctly, but the Baylor from Blood War is just such, in my opinion, just looks better. But this one is scaled correctly. So if you need one scaled correctly, this would work. If you need one that you don't care, you just want it, you, you love how it looks, the Baylor from Blood War is by far a better variant. So that is the Baylor. Put you big boy right here. Put the war troll over there. And now let's see the randos. Eh, not too heavy, so we probably have another lighter or smaller uh, rare. I use rare with quotations because, yeah. Okay, so let's see what we got. Ooh, ooh. Now this is once again, uh, they've remade this from an earlier set. They, they didn't re- or, the last time they made one was actually all the way back in uh, Aberrations, which, and this line was really, really old at the time. So it's nice to have a more to scale one, and I gotta say, look at the mouth on this thing. It is ugly, and I love the giant pincer claws. That's cool. The giant, uh, the almost like bug-like shell or sea uh, shellfish type shell that it has here. I absolutely love this thing. It is ugly, but it is cool looking. That's the Chul, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to show that. The Chul. Up next, oh, we got a little one of these coin type figures. I believe this is the Scarab Swarm. Horde Scarab Larva Swarm. So like, uh, like, just a whole bunch of scarabs just running around there. Honestly, you could almost use this as like a, a pile of gold, a, a good substitute for that if, if you, if you need like a treasure on the table. That'd be, that'd be a good substitute. I do like that. That is the, uh, Horde Scarab Larva Swarm. Oh, I think this is the last common that we were missing. Very nice. So this is the Human Rabble. Honestly, we got a nice little human here. Not the best paint job, I'm not going to lie. This definitely needs a touch-up. Especially at the face there. Um, he's holding some sort of club. So this could be used as like a nice uh, a street peddler. Or maybe just like a random encounter at a bar and somebody gets a little bit too rowdy and now it's time to bring out the big stick and whack some people. You know... Maybe just a, a crazy villager. Uh, there's a lot of different uses for this particular uh, miniature. You could also use it as a uh, a bandit. I mean, you got a lot of choices here. That's the human rabble. And our final miniature from this booster is... Ooh, another cool one. I think I forgot to take the cards out, didn't I? Oh, well, I'll get them later. This is the Felspawn Mangler. 
So this is really, really cool looking. You probably ain't going to use foul spawns all that often, but when you do, you got it. Or you could just use it as a random uh, encounter of some sorts of just some weird four-armed uh, monster that just wants to fight. Really cool miniature. Well, the face jobs actually, the face paint kind of reminds me of Baraka from uh, Mortal Kombat. I do like that. And the cloak is really a, a really nice touch on that. All right, so for our final pack opening, yes, I'm only opening seven out of eight. I'm going to be opening up the Beholder Eye Tyrant because honestly, it is so so cool, and it feels heavy like that. Like it feels like there's something. Like a heavy, uh, large miniature in with this particular monster. We're going to place the randoms over here for the time being. And we'll take a look at that once we take a look at the Beholder at Highland. This one has two holding spots because it is kind of weak at the base. Just look at this beautiful, beautiful beast. The teeth on this thing, the maw, it is ready to send you to the void of never returning. The eye is well constructed and the stalks are massively beautiful. I love all the spikes sticking out. It is a fantastic centerpiece to any miniature shelf. The Beholder Eye Tyrant, 6 out of 40. Definitely, definitely beautiful and this guy is expensive too sorry iron dragon I'm gonna replace you with the eye tyrant for the remainder of this video but you get to go back here and have some fun I'm gonna put you on this side it's a little bit better over there Alright, and now the final randoms of the video. Okay, Oop. I think our first one just dropped right out. And it was, yep, the uh, Scarab Swarm, so... Ooh, this is actually pretty cool. Now I do have this one already, but it never hurts to have a duplicate. This is Iron Tooth. There we go. Now this is actually a named character goblin in this series, or if you prefer, you could just have him as a regular goblin if you need a goblin horde. Really cool face paint. I love the uh, chain mail. That's a really well done chain mail. The axe, the hand axe there, really, really cool. I mean, he, he's ready to swing and like chop somebody's head off. That's a really, really cool pose. Or maybe he's ready to... Maybe that's not a swing down. Maybe that's, like, he's gearing up to throw it, like, X, X, uh, X chuck it at someone. This is a really cool miniature, though. I love the, uh, the chain mail. They did a fantastic job with it. All right. There is something big in here, but I don't know what it is. 
There's our last regular common, the human rabble. And our final miniature of this video is... Ooh, that's pretty cool. So this is a Chillfire Destroyer. So it's a really cool translucent figure, being uh, blue and with that red sp spikes down the back. It actually almost is like a blue flame that came to life, like a like a super super hot fire elemental, and it's just absolutely destroying everything. That'd be kind of cool. I really like this miniature. I'm not too familiar with the Chill Fire Destroyer, what exactly that is. I know Chill Fire is a spell, but I don't know what a Chill Fire Destroyer is, so apologies on that. But I gotta say it's pretty cool, nonetheless. I love the translucency on it. The attention to detail is actually really well done. You got a whole bunch of ripples and uh, dents and dings and the spikes, red spikes on the back. Just a really, really nice touch overall. If nothing else, you could use it as like an ice elemental with blood spikes on it, or a uh, like a super hot fire elemental with the burning red on the back. Either way, it's a really, really cool idea. That's the Chill Fire Destroyer. All right. Now I'm not going to disappoint you. I did open up a third pack of these back in the day, and of course. It's that guy right there. So I did want to keep one of these uh, miniature boxes sealed, and I chose him because I do have one of him already. And I gotta say, this guy is fantastic. Look at that. This is known as the Ice Worm, or the Worm of the Arctic, and it is a uh, Remoraz. Or Remoraz. Very, very cool miniature. Let's take a look at him. I love the uh, long drills and spikes on the side here. The dead-like eyes of a bug, which is dead on for what they're going for. The almost beard-like spikes underneath here. <clears throat> the... Uh, fangs, or not fangs, but like the webbing coming off here, almost like wing-like. And of course the centipede-like legs running down here. It is just a fantastic, fantastic miniature. And I've had it in my collection for a long time, and I'm super, super happy to have had it all these years. Alright, so with that being said, this has been the Booster Box Busters 2000th subscriber special, a Legendary Evil's Dungeons & Dragons miniature booster case opening. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite miniature was from this particular opening. If I had to choose, I still absolutely love this Draconian uh, uh, character right here. That is a fantastic uh if you want to play as like a dragonborn mage that the Hezro is another fantastic piece I love demons and this is one foot soldier that is definitely needed and the Yaklo is fantastic if, for those trips to the Underdark. And of course, I gotta say, the Storm Titan was a lot better than expected. I absolutely love that thing. And the Beholder Eye Tyrant is by far probably the most desired miniature from this set. So with that said, this has from Booster Box Buster doing a D&D Miniatures Legendary Evils booster case opening, and I'm signing out. Peace.